Hey y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to share with you a budget gear setup that I had intended on taking out with me during a stretch of my Penhody Trail through hike. And I still aim to once it's safe to get back out there. But the gear that I've included in this list I feel is quality enough that I'm willing to take it in the woods out on a backpacking trip and I feel like it would hold up for anybody else who was doing so and and I really made this list with the person in mind who is just getting into backpacking and doesn't want to spend an arm and a leg on the fanciest gear they just kind of want to feel things out but for less than $500 I feel like somebody could really get into this with some decent gear First things first, let's start off with the big three. If you're not familiar with what that is, that just means your shelter, your pack, and your sleeping bag. Usually those are the items that are gonna be the heaviest, but they're also three very essential items. The shelter that I've chosen for this budget list is the Nature Hike Vic One Tent. That's a 15 denier nylon one person tent. It already comes seam sealed. It comes with aluminum tent poles, eight stakes and a ground cloth. This tent, like most one person tents, only has one door, but once I climbed on the inside, I thought it was pretty cool because it actually has, I guess what I'd call one and a half vestibules, because of course there's the vestibule where you enter the tent, but on the other side, you actually have access to that space from inside the tent. So I thought that was pretty neat. This tent is technically a single wall tent because it doesn't have a separate rain fly from the inner body, but the door is made out of mesh. Also there is mesh where I was talking about the, the half vestibule. And then there are two skylights on the top of the tent, which I really thought was so neat. So you can just prop up this little post and it velcros to open up the vent or you can close them down. So if you're really getting a gully washer rainstorm coming in and you don't wanna take any chances of getting wet, then you can shut those down. The setup for this tent wasn't bad and there are actually some instructions that come on a little tag that's sewn inside the stuff sack for the tent. And I really liked how there were these little twisty hooks that you attach the tent to the tent poles. I don't know, it was different than anything I had seen before. I guess I'm easily amused. Total weight for this tent is 43.6 ounces and that includes the stakes, the stuff sacks, all of that. But I was able to shave off an ounce by ditching two of the tent stakes, a little compression band that came around the body of the tent. I just didn't find that necessary even after packing up the tent. And then the stuff sack for the ground cloth. I just crammed in the stuff sack with the body of the tent inside that larger stuff sack. So just getting rid of those few little things, 42.6 ounces is the total weight and the cost of this tent is $122. Before I move on, I just wanna say that there are some more lightweight tent options for about the same price. For example, the Lanshan one that I reviewed a while back would be a much more lightweight option at about 29 ounces but this tent is freestanding so trying to think from the perspective of a beginner this tent will set up and even if you can't stake it out perfectly you're not really going to have to stress about it where the lanshan you'd have to have trekking poles it's not freestanding it takes a little bit more finesse so depending on your skill level you might feel more comfortable going with the lanshan and saving weight but for a freestanding tent that i feel like is a good option for beginners i think this is a good place to start for my pack i went with the 3f ul gear water resistant pack it's a pretty inexpensive pack for what you get it's made out of nylon and has an internal capacity of 40 liters external capacity of 16 liters for an overall 56 liters of room to put your stuff in. I feel like it has most of the desirable features in a pack, including a large mesh packet on the outside, pretty sturdy shoulder straps and hip belt straps. They seem thick and cushiony. There are large hip belt pockets. I was actually impressed with how much room there were there in the hip belt pockets because snacks. It's got what I call cup holders or the little side pockets to put your water bottle, tent poles, etc., on either side. And then two little straps above that. So I assume to help fasten something like your tent poles to the pack. And there's an elastic bungee cord on the big mesh pocket, also some other gear attachments on the outside of the pack. And there is a hydration port going from the inside of the pack to the outside if you choose to drink from a water bladder with a tube. And then on the inside, it's pretty much one large 
big storage area except for a little pocket flap, I guess you would call it, that's got a zipper on it so you can keep easy to reach stuff right there. I assume some people might put their water bladder in there if that's what they drink from, but I would probably just carry essentials there that I wanted quick access to. I was happy to see that there were some pretty sturdy straps, especially the sternum strap on the pack because when I got my pack for the Camino from 3F UL gear, it was a pretty decent pack, but the sternum strap was made out of like ribbon that you would tie up in your hair if you were gonna cheer at a football game on Friday night. That's the way I described it when I got it. So the sternum strap would just loosen up while I was hiking and that was kind of annoying. So this strap seems like that it'll do better at staying in place. The only downfall I would say of this pack is it doesn't have an internal frame and the material is just kind of flimsy. I wouldn't say that it's not able to withstand you know being on trail like it's going to fall apart but it's just not a sturdy stiff type material so they recommend that you use either a sit pad or if you've got an accordion type folding closed cell foam pad uh, that you put that on the back panel to help kind of stabilize and make everything more sturdy there on your back you probably could go without it. I would not think that it would be super comfortable to have lopsided gear pressing on your back. Uh, so I'm gonna go with the little closed cell foam sit pad that I got from Gossamer Gear that came with my Mariposa pack. And you can buy those separately from Gossamer Gear because the pad does not come with this pack. Uh, for 10 bucks and they weigh two ounces. The pack itself weighs 31.8 ounces and costs $57 from AliExpress. And if you add $10 for the sit pad to put back there, you're looking at $67 and an added two ounces, so 33.7 ounces. Another thing that I would highly recommend adding to this pack is a pack liner because it is not a waterproof pack. And even when I hack with a waterproof pack, I still add some sort of liner but they only cost $5 for a pack of two, which is way cheaper than a box of compactor bags. I mean, if you already have a compactor bag, then you can use that for $0, but you can buy them online also from Gossamer Gear's website, and they only weigh 1.35 ounces. And for our final component of the big three, the sleeping bag. I looked at several different sleeping bags and finally dialed in on the Agus Max ultra light goose down sleeping bag. It's an 800 fill power sleeping bag with a comfort rating of 52 degrees, a lower limit of 43 degrees, and then an extreme limit of, you're probably gonna die past this, of 15 degrees. This sleeping bag weighs 18.6 ounces and is available on Amazon for $95. Now I know that the comfort rating is a little high on this sleeping bag, but if you're just getting in to backpacking, I highly recommend that you do it in the warmer season, so preferably in early summer or late summer, early fall, where you're not miserable at night, but that way, if you make some mistakes with your clothing or your gear, or if you end up wet because you didn't set your tent up right, then you're not putting yourself at a high risk for hypothermia. And then as you get more familiar and more experienced, you can kind of start trekking off in some of the cooler seasons. However, if you feel pretty comfortable with your current level of experience, but you've just been out of backpacking for years and you're like, I really wanted a warmer rated sleeping bag so I could go in cooler months, then there also is an Agus Max G1 series that's available through AliExpress. The comfort rating on that sleeping bag that's also 800 fill power is 39 degrees. It has a lower limit of 30 degrees and then extreme rating of zero degrees. The G1 is a little bit heavier, of course, at 26 ounces. It's also a little bit more expensive and runs about $118. Of course, all of these prices that I'm mentioning today are subject to change. Things go on sale, etc. But at the time that I created this content, this is what the prices were. I have both of these sleeping bags now and I'm hoping to get to test them out at both of their comfort limit temperature ratings so I can let y'all know because I'm a cold sleeper so I like to know if a temperature rating is true to its number, especially for folks like me who sleep a little colder at night. Next up, I wanna talk about the sleeping pad that I selected. 
And when I first got into backpacking, I thought, you don't need a sleeping pad. Like, it's not a necessity, but it, it really was for me, and I really feel like it is, and that it would be a mistake to go without one for several reasons. First of all, a sleeping pad helps insulate you from the ground. And second of all, it's important to sleep at night if you're going to backpack during the day. And I did not sleep well without a sleeping pad. So I recommend trying one out. And the one that I'm going to carry with me that I've included in this budget list is the Sleep and Go inflatable sleeping pad. It's two inches thick, blows up pretty easily, and it's rated a 2.1 for the R value, that just means its ability to insulate you. And if you're gonna backpack during three season weather, the minimum R value that they suggest that you have is a two. So it's just above that uh, with the higher the R number being the more insulating value it has. So anything below a two, you probably don't want to take with you in the cooler months. This sleeping pad weighs 14 and a half ounces and is available for $40 on Amazon. The dimensions of this sleeping pad are 23 inches wide by 75 inches long, and it comes with a little patch repair kit. So if you're in the field and you get a blowout, you can slap that on. And if you're gonna have an inflatable sleeping pad, I highly recommend taking that with you because I've had a couple of times where I've needed to use mine while on trail and it makes for a better night of sleep if you don't have to sleep on the ground. But rest easy knowing that this sleeping pad has a lifetime guarantee. I thought that that was pretty neat. Now, if you wanted to save money here, and you tend to sleep on your back, then you could probably save money and weight by going with a closed cell foam pad. They have a lot of different ones on the market, but the cheapest one that I found you can get online, it's a blue roll-up pad, and it costs about $10. I believe I got mine from Dick's Sporting Goods online. I think walmart.com has them. But you can trim the pad to where it fits the length of your body perfectly and shed some weight. I think when I carried the one that I started with on the Appalachian Trail, it weighed about 10 ounces or so. Closed cell phone pads are generally lighter than inflatable pads, unless you get a pretty expensive inflatable pad. So for 14.5 ounces and the added comfort of being able to sleep on my side or on my stomach and not have my hips dig in the ground, it, it's worth it for me. So anyway, that's just a tip if you're looking to save more money and more ounces of weight, but for me, carrying a little bit more weight, having 14.5 ounces and spending 30 more dollars. It's worth it for me to be able to sleep more comfortably on my side or on my stomach and not have my hips digging in the ground. Now let's talk about food and water. First of all, cooking on trail is optional. If you don't want to cook, then you'll definitely save weight and money on the supplies that you would needed to have purchased to be able to cook. Uh, but for me, having a hot meal on trail is absolutely priceless and it's a big morale booster for me. So I'm gonna carry cooking items and I included them in this list. To start with, you'll need a food pot. I'm gonna carry my old trusty Stanco grease pot. It's made out of aluminum. So full disclaimer, make sure you do your research and figure out whether you're okay with cooking on aluminum. Uh, I'm not recommending that you do it. I'm just telling you that that's what I use while I'm on trail. The Stanco grease pot runs for about $7 and weighs 3.6 ounces. I've been using this food pot since I started my through hike of the AT in 2015. And if you're gonna cook, you've gotta have a stove to heat up your water. So I went with the BRS stove. That's what I'll be carrying with me. I had it on my CDT through hike and it's still kicking. It costs about $17 on Amazon and weighs 0.85 ounces. Yes, less than an ounce. The food bag I'm gonna use to store all of my food and then to hang a bear bag at night is the Coglins dry bag. The 25 liter bag is $10 and weighs two ounces and that should be plenty big enough to store my food and probably my food pot etc. and that also. And then you gotta have something to eat with so I'll be carrying my Tokes titanium long handled spoon that costs ten dollars and weighs just a little over a half an ounce 0.55 ounces but you can save ten dollars right here on this gear list by taking a spoon that you have from home or by acquiring a plastic spoon some 
to go plastic wear if you end up eating out somewhere just kind of set that aside so that's one spot where you could shave off a little bit right there i will say if you're going to continue backpacking though investing in a ten dollar spoon might sound crazy but the titanium seems to hold up forever it's also very lightweight and having the long handled spoon if you're going to eat mountain house meals in those little envelopes that they come in being able to dig down to the bottom of it without having to stick your whole hand in there is pretty convenient. For water treatment, I went with the Sawyer Squeeze Mini because it only weighs 1.62 ounces and costs about $20. Now you're not gonna get as high of a flow rate if you went with the regular Sawyer Squeeze, but for half the price, it's a pretty good deal for those just getting into backpacking. Now let's talk about rain gear. The best deal, hands down, that I have ever found on rain gear is the frog togs ultralight 2 rain suit now it's it's got its limitations it's not extremely durable it's not something that you should take out on a trail that is not well maintained but for a highly traveled trail where you're not going to be tromping off through the briars it really does do well i took it on my through hike of the appalachian trail i did have to change it out a little over halfway through because mine finally got ragged enough that I needed to, to switch it out. But it's lightweight. The small suit only weighs nine ounces. Of course, that's gonna vary depending on what size you get. It's breathable. It's not so attractive. It, it's certainly not cute, but when you're out on trail, it's more about functionality than being fashionable. The jacket has elastic around the wrist too, which I really do like. It's nice to be able to kind of tuck your hand inside of it and have that elastic be on the outside. Or if you have gloves on, then having that elastic, you know, go well on the outside of your gloves and it tuck in so that rain's not just pouring down the sleeve of your raincoat is really nice. And also the waistband on the pants are elastic so you can roll them up if the legs are a little too long for you. And for all of that, it can be yours for only $20. That's really actually a good deal if you think about it because it's the jacket with a hood that is adjustable and the rain pants. Next, let's talk about electronics. It's important to have a light source while you're out on trail. And most people who go backpacking these days aren't lugging with them the old Coleman lantern. So I went with the Nightcore new NU20 headlamp. It's 360 lumens. It's got three different settings as far as brightness goes. And then it's got an adjustable head on it. So it just kind of clicks down and, and you can point the beam where you want it to go. The only downfall to this headlamp is it doesn't have a red beam, but it only weighs 1.88 ounces and costs $30, which is pretty reasonable for a headlamp. If you are gonna upgrade for just another $10 or so, you could get a decent headlamp that does have a red beam on it. The red beam is a desirable feature because that way you're not blinding other people when you're shining the light their way. But also if your eyes have adjusted to the dark, then that red beam isn't harsh and doesn't interfere with that. But probably my favorite thing about this headlamp is that it's rechargeable. Now let's talk about footwear. For the most part, you can go backpacking with any tennis shoes you already have at the house as long as they are big enough. You wanna make sure that you've got a thumb width space between the tip of your toe and the end of the shoe. And when you tie it up, you can do the tap test. You just tap your toe on the ground and if your toe's hitting the front of your shoe, then you probably wanna size up a half a size or so so you don't end up losing toenails while you're going downhill with all this added weight on your back and your toes are drumming on the front of your shoes. You don't have to have anything fancy or a certain brand for footwear. My friend Perk hiked the Appalachian Trail in New Balance tennis shoes. But if you are wanting specifically a trail runner shoe that has an aggressive tread, then Adidas has a line of trail runners available on Amazon. And I found the Men's Rockadia for $45. And I'm looking forward to testing those out. Now let's talk about clothing. First of all, you're gonna wanna have something to put all of your clothes inside of, like a stuff sack. Me personally, I like to use dry bags, so I'm adding redundancy to my waterproofing. So I'm gonna use one of those Coglin's dry sacks. The 25 liter will be plenty big enough. Again, those cost $10 and weigh two ounces. Now, as far as clothing goes, I'm assuming that most people have some sort of athletic clothing that they like to go running in or go to the gym or play basketball with their friends. It doesn't have to be anything name brand, real expensive. 
just something that's synthetic material and not cotton because cotton holds in moisture so it can cause chafing and then also because it holds in that moisture if you're hot during the day and sweat and then the temperature drops you can get hypothermia and die so we want to avoid that if you truly are on a very tight budget and you don't have athletic clothing already at home then you can omit the cooking items that I mentioned earlier and just go with foods that you don't have to cook on trail. You could look into cold soaking and also the sleeping pad that I mentioned, the closed cell phone pad, you could go with that $10 pad and save $30 instead of buying the $40 inflatable pad and then put all of that money towards new clothing to take with you on trail. Walmart has a pretty wide array of athletic clothing for a decent price. My friend Aaron who edits this channel through Hike the CDT and wore some $12 Russell athletic shorts from Walmart. Also, you can go to thrift stores and probably find some higher end brands that are gently used. So you've, you've got some options and hopefully you do already have some things at home. For myself, when I do go out on this stretch and use all of this budget gear, I'm going to use clothing that I already have at home, athletic type stuff. One of the things I'm gonna use is this fleece right here. Uh, instead of my expensive puffy coat. So uh, if I'm gonna do the whole budget gear thing, I'm gonna do it all the way through. So those are all of the items that I feel like are essentials on the list. Like you need to have these things to go out on a backpacking trip. But I do wanna mention a couple other optional items, if you will. The first of those is trekking poles. They're not necessary. Not everybody even likes using trekking poles, but for me, I like kind of getting in rhythm and, and trekking poles help me do that. Also, if you end up upgrading to a tent that's more lightweight but needs trekking poles to set up, like I was mentioning that Lanshan tent, then it'd be a good idea to have those. You can get a low cost pair on Amazon for $20. It looks like they've got pretty decent reviews. I know some Walmarts carry pairs of trekking poles for $20 or so, or if you want a free option, there's always a walking stick that you find in the woods along the way somewhere while you're on your trip. The next optional item that I wanna mention is a battery bank. If you're somebody who uses your cell phone a lot taking pictures or if you're gonna use that as your source of navigation or carry other electronics with you that you think you might wanna charge along the way, then it's probably a good idea to look into a battery bank. You can get a 5,000 milliamp hour charger from Anchor, which I feel like is a good, reliable brand for $20. So these are optional items, if you already have something else that was on this list that you don't have to purchase now, you could always trade out for that or go with a cheaper version of something. But these are just some things to think about. All right, so let's talk about the overall price and weight of this gear list. After everything that I considered essential on this list, so aside from the trekking poles and the battery bank, the total gear cost me $498. So just under $500. It could cost you even a little bit less if you already have some of this stuff. And then the total weight for the essential gear items in this list plus the clothing that I'll be taking with me came out to 10.56 pounds. And I was a little surprised that it was only 10.56 pounds because people generally associate budget gear with being really, really heavy gear. And this is actually pretty close to a ultralight gear setup. Now, if you're not familiar with what ultralight backpacking is, that's basically having a base weight that's under 10 pounds. Base weight is just the items that have a constant weight, so anything that's not a consumable. Examples of consumables might be fuel, toothpaste, water, food, anything that while you use it on your trip, it ends up lightening the weight of your pack. Whereas your tent, your sleeping bag, all of that's gonna stay constant throughout your hike. And this is just a way that people can compare pack weights, but it's, it's really not something to stress over because you could be an ultralight backpacker, but end up having a heavier total pack than somebody that doesn't have an ultralight base weight, but they have less consumables in their packs. I think it's just something that some people like to nerd out on the fact that they can continue to make their pack lighter and lighter by making different changes and cutting off grams. And you'll find out if you're that type of person or if you're somebody that just wants to be comfortable but you're not really stressed out about 
the number associated with your pack. However, if you are interested in the ultralight world, I do feel like you could take this gear list that has the essentials of what you need to get out there and start backpacking and and kind of change it and tweak it a little bit. For example, you could go with the Lanshan one tent that I mentioned and save like 13 or 14 ounces right there. In almost every video I make about shelter, somebody says that they just use a $10 tarp from Walmart. An eight by 10 tarp weighs about 18 ounces. So if you're really on a tight budget, I guess you could look into that too. All of this gear that I talked about, of course, doesn't include everything that would be in the base weight because you still need water bottles to collect water and store water and drink from. Uh, if you're gonna take a battery bank, then that would need to be included. Also, it doesn't include toiletries or a med kit, but if you go light on all of those things, again, if you're hiking in warmer weather and you feel like, hey, Dixie's bringing a beanie, but I don't necessarily need one, you know, then those are things that you can shave off. But I would recommend for beginners not to stress out about being ultralight or, or worrying too much what your base weight is. In my opinion, there are, are two things to consider. How comfortable you are while you're out actually hiking and backpacking, because the weight of your pack is certainly gonna be related to how comfortable you are. If it's too heavy, you're gonna be miserable. But then there's comfort at camp. So if your pack is too lightweight on the other hand and you don't have everything that you need to be comfortable at camp then that's really not going to make for an enjoyable trip so you could load up and be super comfortable at camp or you know take basically nothing and be really comfortable during the day and miserable at camp i think it's much more important to have the mindset of does this work for me does this make me comfortable and happy on trail without overburdening me rather than does this count towards my base weight. But the more you're out there, you'll figure out what you're willing to sacrifice as far as comfort and also what you absolutely cannot live without. Well, that's all I have for y'all today. I hope that you find some of this information useful, especially if you're just getting into the backpacking world or if you've got somebody that you've been trying to talk into it, now you can sell them for less than $500. They can have everything that they need to join you on your next trip. And if you or the person you've been trying to talk into backpacking decides they hate it, at least they didn't pour a ton of money into it and they can probably sell some of their used gear if they wanted to reclaim some of that. One more thing before I go, I just wanted to mention that it is time for another giveaway and I'll be sharing more details on that with y'all soon. But this time I'm gonna be giving away the big three from this budget gear list, so the tent, the sleeping bag and the pack to a subscriber but again look for a video coming up with details about how to enter if you're interested in winning that again thanks so much for watching y'all and we will see y'all next time